Chapter 18 Rint sat cross-legged in the middle of the underground chamber, a circle rune on her forehead glowing in a soft green. Its dim emerald light hinted at the twisted forms strewn around her. They were bodies. At least twenty hooded figures lay scattered across the floor, their blades lying broken and unbloodied beside them. Things had escalated quickly after she dispatched the first five leakers. They had not lasted long. Their technique was poor. That was the problem with leakers. They had relied far too much on their unnatural speed and strength, and had neglected their training. Unfortunately for them, Rin was faster, stronger, and infinitely more skilled. She melted through them as a shadowy blur, and all five fell, almost at once, dead from the blows they never saw. Rin felt little regret in killing them. They were dying already, their life force bleeding out slowly through the runes that gave them their power. It was a small mercy to end it now. And they were killers, who would kill again if left alive. After the last leaker hit the floor, more assassins started appearing on the edges of Rin's co-search. No doubt they were all life-linked and had come to investigate why five life forces had suddenly been snuffed out. They had been stubborn. She had taken out three more hands before they stopped coming at her and started fleeing instead. She had spent the evening hunting them. She lost count of how many she put down. Four full hands had made a stand here in this chamber. They included a true Modishai monk in their number. He had been challenging, especially with twenty leakers aiding him. She had burned through a lot of Ko, cloaking herself in shadow, moving faster than the eye could follow, turning her skin to iron and healing any lucky strikes the leakers had managed to land. There were more leakers out there. The underbelly was infested with them. The Empire had done well to get so many into the city undetected. Pirate Bowl would have played a big part in that. The docks and the ships that came and went were his domain. Still, if the Chris King existed, he must have known. The Kriska were everywhere down here, and even more lived on the docks. Rin found it hard to believe that hundreds of assassins invading the city would not stir the Chris King into action. He had apparently acted on people doing far less. Either the Chris King was scared and hiding, or he didn't exist. Or he had another plan. She turned her attention to the fallen Modishai monk. Like her, he had a large circle rune carved into his forehead. The Immortality Rune a symbol of absolute control over your co. He was still alive. Rin couldn't bring herself to destroy something that had taken decades to create. He wouldn't be going anywhere soon, though. His legs and arms were broken, and it would take him days to heal. He watched her with intense, dark eyes. Rin sighed and walked over to where he lay. She crouched down in front of him. I do not recognize you, she said. I am pleased the Empire is still producing warriors of rare skill. These leakers, they bring shame to the Order. He gave a small bow as best as he could. I train under Master Hoon. He speaks of you fondly. When no one else can hear, of course. Rin raised an eyebrow. Hoon was her old master. He does not think of me as the great betrayer? No true Modushai does. We know not to trust the words of the Dark One. He still whispers then. He rules now. Rin was shocked. She had not heard word from her homeland in decades. The Dark One was a shadowy figure who worked as the Emperor's advisor for centuries. It was his twisted magic that created the Leakers, and eventually corrupted her order. How? hissed Rin. What happened to the Emperor? He died. It was an incurable sickness. But that's impossible. He was immortal. The young man shrugged. He still died. Of course everyone suspected the Dark One's hand in it, but by then he had his armies and his leakers. What is your name? I am Togato Runuko, son of Ando Runuko. Ah, I knew your father. Yes, he also speaks of you fondly. You have friends in the Empire if you ever return. Rin felt her eyes moisten. She turned away quickly. Can you tell me why you are here? The young man winced. Sorry, I am oath-bound. I can only tell you the obvious, that we were hunting you. Rin gave a start. You knew I was here? Well, we knew that Chris King was here. We had no idea it was you. Ah, 
She could see how they would mistake her for the Chris King. They had come down here seeking a powerful wizard that had been in hiding, and they had found one. Rin did not correct the monk. It might be better to keep the waters muddy. Her co-levels had been restored, the universal life force flowing through her immortality rune like a refreshing stream. Rin reached out again, searching the underbelly. There were more hands on the edge of her probes. They were heading towards the docks. She left a flask of water beside the man. Probably best to mend your drinking arm first. She stood up. I will leave you to heal. Tell your father and Huan that I think of them often, and I am overjoyed that they have not turned their back on me. I will, said Togata. And Master Rin, he added. Yes? Kill as many of those leakers as you can. They make my skin crawl. Rin smiled and bowed. Shadows pulled around her like a billowing cloak, and she was gone. And that was the end of chapter 18. If you enjoyed that, please leave me a like, and I'll catch you for the next chapter. Thanks again for listening. Bye.